Good evening. Today is Thursday, October 7, 2021. This is Alex, your host, Corporate Cowboys Podcast, powered by Associates, Incorporating Associates. You already know. Just wanted to catch up with you. It's nearing the end of the work week. And, uh... We're gonna be headed. We're headed towards a work weekend, as is every weekend. Like the work is ever over. Even when I play, I'm working. <laughs> Even when I lie, I tell the truth. I always tell the truth. That was a good movie, Scarface, right? Only movie better than that. Might be uh, um, something like Michael Clayton or something. Something with a little bit more substance and not so much uh, emotion, you know, as a professional, like a professional would appreciate. Something a continent professional would look forward to watching. It has its own little... I mean, sure, every movie's got its own plot lines, its uh, morals, its lessons to be learned over the course of 90 minutes. In the end, though, those life lessons could easily be brought to you by life itself. And some folks who likely get lost in the aspect of entertainment. Inter- entertainment. And miss out completely on the life lessons, on the maxims, on the morals that come from these movies. They get lost in the special effects and the design and And the resolution quality. I guess that's why I like podcasts. I guess that's why we opted for a podcast. Sure, there might be video sooner or later. (laughs) It might come in the form of a webcam. Or in the form of a body cam. But until then, we're patiently... Biding our time, setting up all the pieces, so if one or any of them get knocked down, they are tied together with contingencies, with collateral, so that there is no failure, so that The risk inherent in every choice and every decision made is mitigated. That requires a lot of a person. It requires a lot of dedication, a lot of commitment, a lot of long nights, a lot of early mornings, and a combination of the two. A lot of uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> that reminds me. Every now and then, it's good to have some recognition. It's good to go out of your way and uh, ask for the recognition, whether or not it comes with a reward. Kind of like a like a grant. You're asking for your work to be recognized. You're asking for your capabilities, for your potential. Potential that you should be able to evidence. That you should be able to realize and and materialize. Potential that you should be able to manifest. So that your audience can consider and legitimize 
they're able to rationalize and internalize the message. Oh, that reminds me. When I was younger, I uh, applied for a scholarship. Law school, actually. <laughs> I applied for a scholarship. And law school is meant to be uber serious. They take themselves extremely serious. For the amount of fuckery that takes place in the judicial system, for the amount of fuckery that takes place, I mean, not just on the record, but off the record, obviously, in the halls of justice. I applied to uh, a series of scholarships with a poem. <laughs> you know, because it's law school. And as much as it's about scholarship, you know, the actual act of being an academic, being a successful academic, it's also about being good with literature and composition. It's being good with words, not just spoken, not just verbal. It's not just some oration that your audience is going to evaluate and, and assess and then qualify you as as a recipient of the scholarship, but it's planting a seed. It's planting a seed and then setting the timer on when to harvest. Setting the timer yourself, when to reap what you sow. So much so, get it? So much so that the harvest happens to itself. The fruits of your labor just appear before you. They materialize. That vision becomes a tangible product, a product you can hold, an object you can behold, not necessarily be proud of, but an instrument nonetheless has some value, intrinsic, not just extrinsic. And that comes with time. That comes with setting it and forgetting it. That comes with sowing seeds and then reaping those benefits as you go along. I suppose it's, it's kind of like directing your efforts or, or directing your attention, directing your energy towards something consciously and then subconsciously it pays off. You don't have to have it pay off consciously. You don't need that gratification to be instant. It's like, um, I guess if I would modernize it, it's like modernize it. <laughs> I guess if I dumbed it down, how about like spitting game in the bitch and the pussy just falls in your lap <laughs> unintentional game mind you you're so fucking gamed up the pussy just comes to you without even trying without even looking for it it's happened before but right now I'm in the process of sowing more than just seeds. I'm 
creating networks, I'm creating systems. I'm creating a process, a movement, if you want to call it, though I'm no revolutionary. I'm a fucking nobody. You know this. Just the simple man in a ski mask, suit, and tie. Not even a calling card. One of business and a 45. <laughs> <clears throat> See, this was Alex's personal statement, and I even put in parentheses in rhyming fashion. <laughs> before I get started, y'all want to follow the page on Instagram before it changes over, because we are going through some changes. We always are. We got to stay on our toes at least two steps ahead. Why? Because two is one and one is none. You already fucking know this. You can find us on Instagram, Corporate Cowboys. You'll recognize the profile picture. Patreon, follow the Patreon, subscribe to the podcast. We've yet to put any additional material up, but remember those donations go towards betting on life or betting on death. That's what it is essentially. I mean, you put a you put a donation down on the line, and it's gonna be used. You're sowing seeds yourself. You're minding your own business, if you will. You're you're minding your business. There you go. Not your own, but you're minding business, if you will. Just placing your bets. And with a little bit of luck, a little bit of fortune. And a little bit of dirt will make things happen. And you'll hear about it on this podcast. Or maybe you'll see it in the news. I mean, with the way news works nowadays, that shit is almost instantaneous. It's almost made up. It's almost created, fabricated. So we pulled together enough connects. And uh, you might hear about us. For better or worse. <laughs> you can find links to the Cash App, the PayPal, the Venmo if you want. All that money goes towards operations and legal fees. Because you um, can't ever have enough for the legal team. Could always be a little bit more airtight. A little bit hermetic always a little more so if we're not working for anyone else we're working for no one at all I mean we're not bound to anyone sure we work for you if you're paying attention if you're paying me an attention get it you're paying attention that means you're giving me interest. And it's mutual. The benefit is mutual. With time, I'm receiving dividends just as you are. But it takes some investment. That's all. Alex's personal statement, in parentheses, in rhyming fashion. <clears throat> Poetry is a way of looking at the world for the first time. It's a quote by W.S. Mervyn. You see, my ingress back to school was easier than dropping out. At least, it made more sense and staying away did. Sure, I was beaten up, but never was I beaten down. My will to live encompassed a willingness to continue learning. Now I knew what I would do with a degree. 
Since becoming an amateur social researcher, I've interviewed countless mates. I am ashamed to say I could have been the majority of them. Aimless, but convinced student debt was the next logical step. My ad hoc consultations work more like an illustrative syringe into minds without plans and those with goals but no vision. I would never push students out, but find ways to inquire further how staying in would help them get ahead. A universal truth is I should be invested in their education for sake of their growth, not just for my own. I'm deeply and equally invested in the work they undertake because I am, we all are in a way, meant to be deeply affected by the employment they will negotiate themselves into and the value they will create. Notice how I did not say produce. What we need is new. What I want is new. Few will actually sit and contemplate what it takes to innovate because it requires actually practicing being comfortable with being uncomfortable like has been preached. At least that is what professors have professed in myriad ways since I've been inside institutions. Notice how I did not say become institutionalized. The message of it's not my insert any applicable societal cohort here's problem, it will likely end up being yours to fix, has been packaged and sold in a manner that I cannot justify buying. So making deals and appeals and social contracts are what I have become proficient in, putting myself in positions to challenge the comfort zones of others is how I managed to develop teams of innovators, de facto professionals who revere higher standards. Within the context of food service, this might not seem like much at all, but where the learning was self-imposed and the challenging was of corporate management, I felt as if voluntold. I managed to break a cycle of despair and pave a way for employee colleagues to be active participants in their own professional development, empowering them to empower one another and grow from just showing up for the check to really looking forward to the work environment. I took what I learned working with people first and applied it to my schooling second. I truly believe there is no better teacher than life showing you, practically holding your hand while you figure out what you need. I mean, necessity, of which my calling to innovate has made me plenty aware I have a surplus. <laughs> From community college to university, I did my utmost to avoid fitting uniformly into boxes. I am human. I get in where I fit in. Before I knew what sociology was, I was a sociologist. The class schedule became my newfound oyster and I was on my mission of skill acquisition to become a champion for change an advocate for innovation and fierce opponent of those opposite. The latter, few will opt to voice, but without that voice is exactly why cops only chase robbers. 
the law lacks. The law lags behind crime. And the vaccine necessarily needs a virus. <laughs> Surrounding myself, not with the like-minded, but like-spirited, is how I picked and chose the courses I believed would complement who I am, not dictate who I should be. I participated in several student leadership development programs, always meeting halfway with those more diverse than me. Embarked on a number of group projects to form, storm, norm, and perform through controllable trials and tribulations, exhibitions, and presentations. One memorable group initiative had the objective of reinvigorating the school's agricultural spirit we heard so much about in talks of green and sustainability by creating an environmentally influenced multidisciplinary seminar we could propose to the school registrar comprised of peer counseling activities and exercising for self-actualization but first can you imagine the state of an institution? <laughs> can, but first, can you imagine the state an institution needs to be in for students to identify how their education is failing them? <laughs> siloed, fields of, <laughs> siloed fields of study and tenure schemes keep education stagnant. I can only allege this in a poem because out loud, I have had deans give me a look as if I would leave them jobless. Far from it. These poor souls should not expect to have escaped the human condition simply by having attained a tenured position. As aspiring leaders and educators, we ought to be on the forefront of innovating education itself. Since the advent of high-speed communications, the technical structure of schooling has not changed, and it is the student body that has borne the cost. Sure, Stanford has designed learning, but I believe I have a substantially better proposition something new. I have coined niche studying. See, I was, I was still on this bullshit of niche studying. If niche studying was so popular, people would be fucking doing, if niche studying was so important to survival, to developing a fucking livelihood, people would already be doing it. I shouldn't have to fucking promote it. And yet here I am still selling. Still tilling the earth, still sowing. Damn. That was a fucking cane analogy and I didn't see it. But I'm still caring. So it makes me a keeper of some kind, in some form, in some manner. Since the advent of high-speed communications, the technical structure of schooling has not changed and it is the student body that has borne the cost. Sure, Stanford has designed learning, but I believe I have a substantially better proposition, something new. I have coined niche studying. When and where will I ever pitch it, if not in a statement vying for scholarship? Man, this motherfucker, Alex, is on one. <laughs> I have explored the changes that would be necessary in order to allow students to niche study, like finding a cure for cancer and then recording it in a painting a la da Vinci if a student so wanted. The furthest I got since entering law school, in between having to keep up in general education classes I likely did not need thanks to the internet, 
is that the deployment of digital technology in modern academia has been questionable at best. In parentheses, to avoid possibly prejudicing, pre prejudicing, to avoid possibly prejudicing you, the reader, and mitigating the need for required courses. I have the research that shows it, quantitative and qualitative, and you have the power to support its application. Along with my contact information, if you would like to see it in action and support the vision, I full promise <laughs> over here, full promise, I full promise, you will likely end up seeing it later regardless. Notice how I did not say prophesize it. This is not me being a cynic. But how else will I get this idea where it needs to go if everywhere this prima facie student looks? We are told we are too young or lack the appropriate credentials. Notice how I did not say inexperienced. One more time. I fall promise you will likely end up seeing it later regardless. Notice how I did not say prophesize it. This is not me being a cynic, but how else will I get this idea where it needs to go if everywhere this prima facie student looks, we are told we are too young or lack the appropriate credentials. Notice how I did not say inexperienced. But we're talking personal and professional achievements, six years in the making at the very least. And my year, and my year. <laughs> how old are you? God damn, Alex. But we're talking personal and professional achievements, six years in the making at the very least. And my dreams are becoming more and more real with every step I take to network and associate with other leaders like myself disregarding titles or rank change agents for lack of less ominous words a slew of them inside and outside of the legal profession all geared towards effectuating positive change in our interdependent corners of the world unafraid to labor and collaborate together cognizant of the fact everyone is entry level forever. The reality is students can teach and PhDs and JDs are not ever done learning. So the disconnect between policy and practice I have witnessed in education, labor and employment since first starting my journey serves to tell me I I'm headed in the right direction. <laughs> I am learning the law to employ the law in conflict resolution, negotiation, and enforcement of lawful social contracts. And the continuation of the information of my peers, ages zero to eternity, on the ultimately private benefit on the ultimately very private benefit of public service. Damn. If I didn't get a scholarship, you know why. No. <laughs> my closing, my closing paragraph here. When I finally get out, <laughs> I plan on starting a nonprofit or other charitable organization with the mission of community development. And by community, I mean international. I would love to provide legal service to my fellow aspiring professionals, the youth, the elderly, those with dreams of capitalizing on quality, getting that dream job and negotiating to capitalize on the value of their service. 
facilitating pathways for students into higher education or simply skipping all of that niche studying and securing the desired legal rights to capitalize on their individual innovations. See, that's a fucking message right there. But always with the organizational goal of staying agile when faced with obstacles, confronting adversity with professional integrity, and recognizing diversity as a feature to it all, not the end game. Notice how I did not say planned obsolescence. 